Hey, Walter Sorrell's back with more tips for the knife maker. Today, how to design a knife on your computer. Today I'll basically be showing how I design a knife using Fusion 360, a CAD CAM program. Now, there are two main reasons for designing a knife on a computer. One's, you know, just for fun, and the other is because you're actually trying to manufacture the thing. Now, if you're just doing it for fun, then you don't really need to worry about whether you can actually make it or not. On the other hand, if you're actually trying to manufacture it, you know, there's a lot of stuff that you have to take into consideration. Just be aware that if you're coming up with a design and you really do want to actually make it, uh, there's a lot of stuff that goes into it that we're not going to be talking about here. In other words, just because something looks cool doesn't mean you can actually make it. Anyway, the design that I'll be showing today is kind of my spin on the Bob Loveless style uh, hunting knife. I'm just basically going to be showing the flow of my design process. Uh, the way that I'm doing it here is paired way, way down from what I would do in real life. So anyway, with that caveat in mind, enough talk, let's jump into it. So the first thing that I'm going to do here is create a little box that basically just contains the knife. The reason that I'm doing this is because every knife has to be made from something. So I'm going to start with a piece of steel that's a, that's a particular size. In this case, it's going to be 1.25 inches wide. In other words, an inch and a quarter wide. And then the length is not so important, but you know, we're, let's say we're going to make a nine inch knife. So the next thing that I do is to make an arc. And this arc is going to be the top of the knife. Then I'll draw an additional arc and that's going to be sort of the butt or pommel end of the knife. And all this stuff's going to get adjusted. Next, I'll put in splines. For those of you who are CAD CAM geeks, I kind of stay away from splines if I can. They create some, I won't say problems, but some complexities when you're milling things on a CNC uh, milling machine. Splines, for me, are best for making that curve of the uh, bottom of the knife. Just using an arc tool won't really do it. It won't get you a curve that seems appropriate for a knife, um, for the blade anyway. And you can adjust using the, you know, however many little points you put in there. Then I'm going to drag this and make it tangent to that bottom line. You can just screw around with this to your heart's content to get that line in a way that you like. Then next, I'll be doing the bottom of the handle. So in this case, we're going to be doing a bird's beak type um, handle, meaning that it has a little protrusion on the pommel end, and then it's going to have a bolster with a sort of guard type um, protrusion on the bottom. So the first thing I'll do is make the beginning of that little protrusion for the guard, and then second, I'll kind of start to do some of the pieces for the bird's beak part. Then I'm going to connect those with an arc. In this case, I'm actually making the arc using a three-point circle. And then I trim all the excess. You could do this with an arc tool. I just kind of like doing it with the, uh, with the circle. It gives me a, a sense of sort of the tangencies. And again, I'll trim it. So there we are. We now got the really the whole guts of the thing done in real life of course it's not nearly this fast um, or easy but uh, I sort of knew where I was going in this particular case and then I'm gonna put some little fillets in here to round all the various hard corners if you don't put fillets in then you end up with these really sharp nasty corners that'll dig into you when you're holding it
and you can adjust these radii really just to you know whatever looks good for the knife that you're making okay so now the next thing will be to put in various holes in the tang actually so we'll to we'll put two holes that pins will go through to secure the bolster we're going to have brass bolsters on this it doesn't really matter that they're brass they could be stainless steel or nickel or whatever um, and these are going to be 0.125 that is 1 8 inch holes then we're also going to do holes in the handle scale part uh, and those are going to be quarter inch holes what I'm doing here is drawing a construction line which lets me know what the exact center of that space is and then I'll put the hole on that. Now something that's kind of interesting is a lot of people assume that you always want to have holes exactly symmetrically between the two sides but it doesn't really it's not really true necessarily. Sometimes you want to move them around a little bit. It's basically more important a that they that they're in functional places you know that aren't going to create weaknesses in the knife and second that they look good. So sometimes that might be exactly dead center between the two surfaces or not. Hey guys, let me butt in here real quick to mention that if you're enjoying my videos, I hope you'll help out my channel by supporting us on Patreon. It's easy to do. Just click the link in the cards or go to this address down here and have at it. It's hard to believe, but I've actually been making these videos for a decade now. I've got almost 300 videos available on the channel. So looking back over that span of time, I've probably taken, I don't know, two or three years of work time away from the time that I spend, you know, putting food on the table for my family so that you guys can avoid wasting time making the kind of mistakes I've made. So I hope you'll help out. And uh, in addition to that, you'll also have uh, access to plans for many of the projects that I do, including this one. Uh, if you support the channel on Patreon, it's all there. You can go just click on them and download all kinds of different plans, all the um, dimensions and you know where the holes are and all kinds of things that'll help you move a little faster into, into those projects. All right, back to work. We're gonna go ahead and extrude it. And uh, we've extruded it 0.125 inches. So that's the stock that I'm gonna use is eighth inch stock. So now we've got an actual sort of knife-like object. All right, now the whole process that I'm gonna go through here is how I create bevels. There are undoubtedly other ways of doing them, maybe some better than this. This is just the approach that I've worked out and it seems to work for me. So what I'm doing is I'm drawing a bunch of construction planes I'm basically going to kind of slice and dice this blade blank here. You can see that I've put one plane um, 0.05 inches down from the top, then I'll put another one 0.075 inches. And what that's going to do as we zoom in here is basically divide it into three pieces. So you have the piece in the middle that is going to be the thickness of the, the blade edge and then we're going to create bevels out of the other two sides. But before we do that, we need to slice the whole blade in half because the tool that we're going to use uh, to create the bevels um, can't handle really complicated curves. So we just need to restrict it to this one little chunk of the blade. So now we're chopping up the blade body into a whole bunch of little pieces and then we're going to create operations on each one of those to do the two bevels and then we'll put it all back together when we get done alright so that's the center which is going to be the edge and then we've got two other pieces here that will each constitute the bevel so the way we do that is to use the draft tool and what dra drafting does is allows you to take one of the faces and just turn it at an angle. In this case, um, 
we want about a five degree angle, so that's going to be 85 degrees off of that the original side axis angle. And then we'll repeat the same thing, drafting another edge. It automatically imports the last number that you used. And uh, so now we'll have matching 85 degree angle drafts on each one of those bevel faces. And now we can put the whole thing back together. So we've still got several different bodies that constitute this whole blade blank. So we'll just put them all back together and restore it to being a single body again. But now that single body has these knife-like bevels built into it. And then we'll create a component. Now we're gonna create the bolster and the scale for the handle. So we'll do that by sketching some lines and then we'll extrude that face right there. You always wanna make sure that you choose a new body and don't just let it extrude something um, under the join function, which will cause it to stay part of that blade. So now that's our sort of a blank for the bolster and we'll more or less repeat the same process to create the scale. So the reason I'm only doing one of each of these is we're gonna mirror this whole thing and create mirror parts for the bolster and the scale and then we'll have one on each side. So I'm doing this by creating another construction plane that basically you know, serves as a reference for the mirror. So what we're doing now is establishing a radius for the parts that constitute the handle, that's going to be the bolster and the scales. So you can see we've, we've just drawn an arc, selected that whole little uh, face there, and then extruded it using the intersect function. Then we'll, once we've got those parts all extruded, we'll mirror them. So there's the mirror operation and we're gonna choose both of these two parts to mirror. And then we choose the mirror plane, which is that construction plane that I set up earlier. And you can see these little ghost parts appear there. And that's where we want the new parts to appear. One last little operation that we're doing here is modeling the plunge line at the edge of the Ricasso and I'm doing that using a fillet. In this case, I'm using a 0.375 inch fillet. The reason being that if I want to do this, if I want to mill it on a milling machine, I need a fillet that's at least bigger than the radius of the tool that I'm going to be actually be using to mill out that face. If you're just designing a knife to design a knife, you don't have to worry about this sort of thing, but uh, given that this you know, is something that I might potentially manufacture, uh, you know, I want to make sure that it's actually going to match the tools that I use to make it. So there we are. We've got basically the whole knife made. The only thing we need to do now is model the pins that will hold the scale and the bolster pieces onto the knife. Okay, so now I'll just extrude those pins. 
and it doesn't matter how big I make them because I'm going to trim them off using an extrusion technique. So basically I have to go through a little rigmarole to draw a line so that I can create a complete face to extrude and then basically chop the ends off of those pins. And it would be easier to have done those uh, beforehand, but there are some reasons that I do it at this point that I won't get into. And it makes this step a little bit more complicated, but you know, the whole thing works fine anyway. So once I've got that all drawn, I've got a face that will match the previous extrusion that I made. Then I just extrude that through the pins using the intersect function in. We've chopped off the ends of the pins. Now we have pins that precisely match the rest of the handle. And that's basically it. That's uh, the full construction of the knife. So now really all we need to do is choose some materials for the handles. And in a design like this, it's really just to make it look cool. It, it's not really important in terms of the manufacturability of the knife. So I'll choose walnut handles, handle scales, and then we'll do brass for the pins and the bolsters. And you can assign some sort of steel to the to the blade itself if you want to. But the sort of gray look pretty much looks like a metal anyway, so there's really no great need to do that. And there we have it. That's the full design. And you can use these basic procedures to make, you know, any number of different kinds of knives. This just happens to be the design that I pulled together here, but it really, you know, you could have any kind of crazy design that you wanted and use essentially these same principles to pull the whole thing together. Hope you had fun with that. So my intention is to do another video in the not too distant future that looks at some of the manufacturing aspects of designing knives on computers. Uh, you know, a lot of guys sit around drawing or designing cool looking knives that are basically impossible to make. So in that video, I'll try to point out some of the pitfalls that you run into when turning that badass design into something that you can actually hold in your hand. All right, thanks guys, and see you soon. Thanks for watching guys. If you feel like you got something out of this video, don't forget to subscribe. Also, click on the link to Patreon for a great way to give back to the channel. Plus, check me out on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. Links in the description. If you want something sharp and pointy, maybe a gift for yourself or one of the cooler people in your life, check out my Tactics Armory website and pick up one of our tactical or outdoor knives. And finally, if you want to learn to make hamons or Japanese swords, check out waltersorrelsblades.com where you can find videos about how I make hamons as well as forging, mounting, polishing, and fittings for Japanese swords. Thanks and see you soon!